Now, it is my privilege um, to, and a ble- such a blessing to continue in, in ministering to you from the book of First Peter. The book of First Peter, if you, buy, if you have, have your Bibles here, or if you have a Bible app, you're more than welcome to turn there. The book of First Peter, we're in chapter 3, and um, we're going to start reading from verse 8 today, as we have done last week, we've done up until verse 7. If you've missed that, that's available on the app and on the website. You are more than welcome to go and have a look at that just so that you have a bit more background on this word in 1 Peter. Now let us read it first. 1 Peter chapter 3 from verse 8. Now finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and, the ear, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Now we know that Peter is ministering to this persecuted uh, congregation, these persecuted believers, calling them from the very beginning elected ones, those that are elected by God, but also that are exiled. Now we've from the very beginning shared with you that Peter is saying, listen, you're elected because God chose you, but you will always feel in the natural, in this context that we live in, in the natural realm, we always feel like exiles. We always feel like we do not belong. We love life, but there's, there's so much more that we're a part of. We, 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 we would slowly but surely understand that it's actually true when Jesus said, when they hated me, they'll hate you. If they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. If they marginalized me, they'll marginalize you. Jesus said, no slave is greater than his master, so this is what you will experience. Now, it is in this vein that Peter actually, in just the previous chapter, came and spoke to us spoke to these believers so persecuted and oppressed at the moment, saying to them, listen, a very important thing that you've got to understand, that in the kingdom of God, things are upside down. Saying to them that you should not try to be the the best and the greatest and the brightest light in the room. You should not try to always go up and prove everybody else what your identity is. Says it's actually when you follow in his example, it is an example of submission. It is an example of surrender. It is an example of being the least. He said, if you want an example, he's saying, listen, I want you to submit to the authority given over you. Um, I want you to submit to all earthly authority. He even says, slaves, submit to your masters. And he even spoke to women and even spoke to men, saying, listen, you guys have got to submit to one another. Don't always try to affirm your position. Why? Why? Because in chapter two, he said this, he said, because Christ is your example. You are a chosen people to follow him, to listen and see the way that he has done it and follow in his footsteps. And therefore, Peter calls us to a life of submission. Now, it it was pretty tough, I think, for them, not 
so tough, but tough for them to hear that, listen, it's not about, it's, it's, it's not about being the head. It's not about being the, the greatest. It's about being the least. It, it must have been tough for them to hear that. But in seeing this example in Christ Jesus, who did not hold on to his heavenly glory, but actually gave himself the righteous for the unrighteous so that we can be made righteous, in him we see the, the supreme example of what it means to give yourself. Now here we actually get a bit of a shift. We, we now know that Peter is saying, listen, in God's community, God's people are people of submission. We also uh, uh, find more and more that now Peter is stepping into a deeper sense of submission. And he's talking to us about the good deeds he spoke about in chapter 2. Do, do these good deeds so that people can see and glorify God. He now comes and he makes it a bit even more practical for them. He says to them, yes, he says, finally, brothers, uh, 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 finally, all of you, speaking to everyone called by him, everyone identified in Christ Jesus. He says, now all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. So Peter's saying it's not only that we should submit, not only do we should actually say, listen, we follow the example of Christ and we'd be the least, but he's saying there's actually a contrary way of doing it, to the contrary. Peter gave us a threefold uh, um, instruction of submission in the previous chapter. He pointed us to the example of Christ, but now he comes and he brings a bit of encouragement because he knows that what he just said it's not the easiest thing to do. And just so that you have a heads up, what Peter is about to say, you will need even more encouragement for. Say, so Peter, are you serious? Last week was tough. It was tough to hear that God said, we, we, we are called to submit. Are you serious? Well, Peter thought it needs encouragement. So Peter said, listen, I'm going to give you this instruction. I'm going to encourage you in even a deeper sense of submission and surrender towards what God wants. And then he addresses things that are very close to them. He addresses their hearts and their demeanor. All of you. Who's included? All the elected exiles. All those in Christ that sometimes feel that this world is stepping on them or pushing them aside or not dealing with them rightly. He's saying, all of you, be what? Be like-minded. Be sympathetic. Love one another. Now, if we would just be to stop there, it's already a big ask. All of you love one another. Be sympathetic. Be like-minded. In other words, be one. Be compassionate. Remember our example. Be humble. Peter is saying God's people are a humble people. God's people are not people walking around the whole time affirming themselves. It's very quiet in here this morning. I told you it's going to need encouragement. Luckily, there's some encouragement. Listen to this. He says, be humble. And then he, he goes into the do nots. Do not what? Do not repay evil with evil. He's not saying you won't deal with evil. He's not saying people won't deal evil with evil. You. He's saying, do not repay evil with evil. Evil, all right. Insult. Do not repay insult with, but he's, he started it. What do we do as parents? 
I don't care who started it. Do you want me to stop this car and turn this thing around? I will. I don't care who started it. You sort it out. He said it first. He said, Peter is literally saying to us, do not repay insult with insult. Don't step into the realm of the world. Don't step into the demeanor of the world. Don't step into the arrogant existence of just trying to make yourself known. So, Peter, that's the, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a different character. You know what? In Christ, we are called to be humble and not repay insult with insult. Let me put it in his words. On, can you say it with me? The contrary. <laughs> if the Bible says on the contrary, then you better buckle up and heads up. On the contrary. So we know now we're not supposed to repay evil with evil. We know now we're not repay uh, insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Wait a minute. I mean, I can maybe find myself not repaying insult with insult by keeping quiet and biting my lip. That I can do. But Peter, are you asking me to bless those that curse me? Yep. Are you asking me those that insult me, you want me to say good things about them or to them? Well, what is a blessing? What is a blessing? I don't know, there's a book that says, I think it's a Bible, it says that if you just bless those that bless you, you know better than, even the heathens do that. But we called by God to repay insult with what? With blessing. Now if you think this is tough, listen to this. It says repay insult with blessing because you were to this you were called. Okay, you've got to follow this with me. Peter is saying, listen, don't repay uh, evil with evil. Don't repay insult with insult. On the contrary, I want you to repay insult with blessing. You know why? Because you were called to do what? You were called to repay insults with blessing. I'm just reading. Are, are you with me? Who called you to do this? Come on, Peter doesn't start in chapter three. Jesus Christ and the example of our Savior on the cross, paying the price for you and me, calls us and will call out to us to repay insult with blessing until the fullness of time comes. He's calling us to repay insult with blessing because to this we were called. We were called to do this. But we, you, don't, you, you don't deal with things that way. Yet everybody will walk all over you. I, I don't know. Our example says differently. If I repay insult with blessing. Imagine we do this in our marriages. Is that a bit too close to the scheme? Maybe, um, imagine we do this in our workplace. Somebody's got it in for me and I keep blessing. Why? Because we were called to this. It doesn't finish there. It says, you were called to this so that you may inherit a blessing. Thank goodness, the blessing is coming to us as well. <laughs> but, but what do we want to do? We want to start at the bottom. The Lord bless me and keeps me and holds me. And I don't know where you guys are at, but the Lord just bless me and hold me. <coughs> Isn't it so? And the Lord made me the head and not the tail. Brother, you better be hey, careful now, speak to me. I'm the king's boy. We 
repay insult with blessing. Because to this you were called. So that you may inherit a blessing. Is an inheritance something you get immediately? Some of you are going, I knew there was a catch. <laughs> what is an inheritance? Come on. Is it something you've got to? You've got to wait for an inheritance of it, isn't it? Do you think God has got a good inheritance to share? Just part of our inheritance is salvation, yes. Peace, that surpasses all understanding. Life in abundance, joy overflowing. Just, just a few things. Is that the blessings you would want to inherit? Yes? Okay, then let's read the next verses. It says, whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. He's saying, listen, if you want to do this, this, this is what we were called to do. He says, if you want to do that, whoever loves life and wants to see good days, if you want to inherit life in abundance, not only then but now, and, and see good days, he says, you must keep your tongue from speaking evil, your lips from deceitful speech. You must turn from evil. Why? Because if somebody insults you, that is evil. And you know what? The evil knocks at your door when it's offered to you. It wants to move in you, through you, and move from you as well. So keep from doing evil. If somebody's doing evil to you, don't do evil to them. Choose. Keep your lips from speaking evil. Choose to do good. Then he says, and seek peace. Peace, where's peace? Where's the peace in the situation? Yes, I've got it. And then he says, pursue it. Oh, pursue it. How do you pursue something? Oh, I found it. It's mine. Here it is. Come on. Anybody know how hunting works? You find something and there it is. You've got to pursue it. You've got to keep going after it. If you're pursuing a person, you've got to keep following him. It's not the easiest thing to do. Seek peace and pursue it. Keep going. Keep going after it. I, I did say, when, 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 when he said that, I, I didn't say anything, and, and then I said that. And, but if he says it again, that, hey, that's twice, man. I was like, once bitten, twice shy. Word. Fool me once. Isn't that what we say? Keep peace and... Pursue it. Why? For the eyes of the Lord. Let me connect the dots. For the eyes of the one that called you to give blessing when you're insulted. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Being in the right standing with God. So when all of these things happen, I'm, evil is being done towards me. I'm being insulted. It's not what does the situation demand. It is I want to be right standing with you, Lord. What do you want me to say? What is it that you want me to share? I will not be led or ruled or governed by evil. You do what you want to do in me, Lord, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. If evil presents itself, that's evil on the outside. If you allow that evil to settle, to make a nest and to move from you, that is doing evil. You can either experience evil and deal with it in righteousness, experience insult and deal with it in blessing, or you can experience insult and be part of the insult and take that evil and make it your own. Am I reading too much into this? Or is this what it's saying? Now it's very interesting that Peter's actually preaching, yeah, he's ministering to them, but he's quoting David. You didn't see that? You see, in your Bible, you'll see it's a quote. Psalm 34. Peter's quoting David. Psalm 34, that Peter's quoting here. I just want to go there quickly. 
Psalm 34, the heading of Psalm 34 says this. A Psalm of David when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech who drove him away and he left. So it's a Psalm that was written when David was actually in a bad situation. He was almost killed by another king because he could not be in his own kingdom because even though he was elected by God as the next king and anointed by God and by Samuel as the next king, he was exiled to another nation and almost killed by that nation. So he was an elected exile. Peter is saying, you, the elect exile, speaking to these Christians, then pointing to David and quoting David, an, an elected, a king in, 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 in uh, um, becoming a king, being anointed already, God's word already being spoken over him, the, the, the oil already flowed over him, David being anointed as king and then driven out of his own kingdom. David writes in Psalm 34 and he starts off in this, uh, off in this way, I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. That is what David's saying while he's being exiled and, and being driven from his own nation and trying to survive amongst godless kings. Don't take the evil being done to you and make that evil part of you. Turn your eyes to the Lord. Now, let me just show you something of David. Now, I just read with you what Peter said. Now, Peter is quoting actually from verse 12. Whoever loves life, Psalm 34 verse 12 says, whoever loves life and desires to see good days, keep your tongue from doing evil and your lips from telling lies. This is what we read that, that he's quoting. Now, remember who he's quoting. He's quoting David here. In 1 Samuel chapter 24, this very king that, that exiled David, King Saul that is pursuing David. So that David had to flee from his own nation. So that David knows this king, when Saul finds him, he's gonna kill him. This very David, while Saul was having another war and actually going back to his own city, his own place, Saul came into a, uh, a situation where he went into a, um, can you believe I can't get the word for a grot? Cave. Thank you. I'm going, come on, it's gotta come, it's gonna come. But thank you, cave. Saul went into a cave. And while he was in the cave, he didn't know that David knew that Saul was in the vicinity and he was hiding in the cave. Now while Saul was in the cave, he was so close to David that David actually went while they were in the cave and David cut a piece from Saul's garment. Now remember, this is the person pursuing David to kill David because he knows that David's been anointed as king. So David cuts a piece from Saul's robe. And when Saul's men and Saul goes out, out of the cave, David felt so guilty. David felt so guilty and he felt, said, I should never have done this. This is anointed of God. I should never have done this. But then he started speaking to Saul. Listen to this. Verse eight, David went out of the cave. This is in 1 Samuel 23, verse eight. David went out of the cave, called out to Saul, my Lord, the king, when Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, why do you listen when men say David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes the Lord Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some argued with me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lay a hand on my Lord because he is the Lord's anointed. See my father, look at this. He's calling Saul his father. See my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but I did not kill you. See that there is nothing in my hand to indicate that I'm guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. David is saying to Saul, you are trying to kill me. God gave you in my hands. I cut a piece of your garment. This is how close I was with you, but I did not kill you. 
I did not kill you because in my eyes, I can only do what God allows me to do. That's why I even feel guilty of just cutting a piece off your robe, even though he is the one that gave you into my hands. What an example of blessing for curse. Amen. You know what happened to Saul? What Saul said? Saul said, when David finished saying this, this is verse 16, Saul asked, is that your voice, David, my son? He wept aloud, you are more righteous than I, he said. You have treated me well, but I've treated you badly. You have just now told me about the good you did to me. The Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. When a man finds his enemy, and does he let him get away unharmed? May the Lord reward you well for the way you've treated me today. Listen, Saul was pursuing David to kill David, but when he insulted David, when he did evil to David, David did good to Saul, and not Only did he not kill Saul, but in the end, the very mouth of the one that is trying to kill him pronounced a blessing over David. The very one that is pursuing him to kill him said, David, you are more righteous than I. Go finish that passage, you'll see. He said, surely you will be king. From Saul's mouth. Two chapters further, Saul, again, being Saul, Pursue David again. Two chapters. Chapter 26. Saul pursued David, and while they were camping, David went with his men into Saul's camp. So much so, David must have been good. So much so that David went into Saul's tent where Saul was sleeping. And he took Saul's water bottle next to Saul's head. And then when David did this, I want to read this to you quickly. He took his spear as well. In verse 22, he said, here is the king's spear. David answered, let one of your young men come and get it because he said to him, he said, listen, he called to Abner, he said, Abner. And David is is on the hill. He's calling Abner and Abner in the end said, yeah, what, 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 what do you want? He said, you're supposed to protect the king. He said, you should be killed, you and your men, because look here, yeah, I've got the king's spear and the king's water bottle. He said, but I did not kill him because God would not allow me to touch the anointed of God. He said to Saul, Saul, if I was really bent on killing you, I would have taken your life. He said, but you are listening to wrong words from other men. He said, you should listen to God. Let God deal with this situation. Do not go about in the evil way that you are. David tried to warn Saul over and over and over again. And then he said to Saul, send somebody so that they can collect your spear and your water bottle and listen to this. Then Saul said to David, verse 25, may you be blessed, David, my son. You will do great things and surely triumph. Now let me ask you, these two were at war, or Saul was at war with David. Now if you wanting to, pursuing David to kill David, then you say you will surely triumph. You are actually saying, David, I bless you and actually you will win. Now let me read it to you again. Can you go with me to Peter? And remember who wrote these words? What did Peter say just before he started quoting David? On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. God will bless you even though you are being cursed. If you return insult with a blessing, you will inherit his blessing. God will, in his righteousness, you stand, so God will bless you for your righteousness, but you will find that sometimes even those that are pursuing you, that, that, that don't like you, that hate you, that want just the very worst things over you, if you continue in doing good to them, there's a time where those that curse you, they, where their hearts turn around and they start blessing you. Say, Peter, is that the way we should go about? No, Peter says so. Jesus gave us that example. David showed us the way, and Peter said to them, if you look at David, and you look at Christ, then the way of dealing with evil is not evil. 
And the way of dealing with, a, with an insult is not an insult. It's to bring blessing when an insult comes your way. Verse 13, and we'll finish this off. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? Who will harm you if you are doing good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, look at David, he did the right thing and still Saul kept pursuing him. He says, do not fear their threats and do not be frightened, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that lives within you. He's two things that he addresses right at the end, he said, listen, the only way you can do this if you stop fearing people, do not be afraid of the insults they send your way. Do not be afraid of the things that they say they're gonna do to you. If I protect you, you will be protected. If I'm with you, you will be, you will, you will be under my covering. He says, do not fear them. But then he says this, but revere the Lord. Fear him and him alone. Do not fear what they can do to you. And listen to this. I want to close with this. He says, and always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. Now we quote this verse in the context of always be ready to testify, to witness about the Lord Jesus Christ. The context here is if you are being dealt with wrongly and you treat evil with good, if you are being insulted and you treat insult with blessing, there will come a point where people will ask you. You won't have to pursue them. They will ask you, why do you deal with things this way? Why don't, you, why don't you give up on that friend of yours that is anything and everything but a friend now? Why don't you give up? Do you know what he's saying about you? Why don't you say the same? Do you know how they're insulting you and cursing you? Why don't you do the same? We see you, you deal with things differently and you continue to do with it. You seek peace and you pursue it. You return blessing for insult. You return good for evil. And when they ask you, Peter says, be ready, always be ready to give an answer for the hope that lives within you. And let me be very clear about this. In our own strength, this is impossible. Do you know that? Have you tried? I'm, I'm never going to say anything bad about anybody again. Have you tried? But you see, if you know what the hope inside of you is, and if you know who the hope inside of you is. Peter says, if you deal with things God's way, then those around you will come to you and ask, what is this hope? That's when you've got to be ready to share about the hope that lives within you. What do we want to do? You insult me, I insult you. You evil on me, I evil on you. But let me tell you about the hope. Let me tell you about Christianity. Just don't insult me because I'm going to insult you. Just don't get to my wrong side, man. I'll, I'll deal with you harshly. But then we share with them. This is who Jesus is. This is what Jesus does. Hear, hear me this morning. From Peter's side, from my side, there's no judgment here. Even in Christ, he's saying, listen, come. Come to me, and I will show you how to return insult with blessing. I will show you how to do good in the face of evil. This is what Jesus did, and this is what he's still doing today. 
May I encourage you as I encourage myself this morning that we surrender to his way of submission, of surrendering to what is righteous and right in his sight so that the hope can truly be revealed. The hope inside of us. Amen. People are not going to ask you to reveal inside the hope inside of you if it's not visible, if it's not to be seen or to be found anywhere. Amen. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, this morning we just want to we just want to come and ask, Lord, would you just bring us to your feet? We pray, Lord, and we bow before you as we ask. Strengthen us, Lord. Give us the grace and the humility to be humble, not to return evil for evil and insult for insult, but to take your example, Lord Jesus, as we turn insult into blessing and evil into good and grace and graciousness and love. Lord, we pray that you would help us understand the powerful godly nature that you have established in each and every one of us. We pray, Lord, that we would always seek peace and pursue it. We pray that you would help us to remember that we were called to return insult with blessing and so doing inherit blessing ourselves. We pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen.